down. This is a perfect spot. In the 1600s, when Pennsylvania was first settled, there was reports of thousands of hemlocks growing around trout streams just like this. What makes this place so special? It, it is a special place. You can see that we're near the water, which hemlocks love. They love well-drained, rich, organic soils. So it would make sense that we would have these old hemlocks surrounded by a newer succession coming through. Yeah, the hemlock is a really important tree in its native habitat. Hemlocks play a crucial role in preventing soil erosion. On the left side here, you can see just how well the hemlock trees will hold soil and keep erosion at bay. One of the most important things about these hemlocks growing beside the stream is their ability to cool the water temperature. The brook trout here depend on these hemlocks to keep the water cooler during the summertime um, and during the spawn. Without these hemlocks, these native brook trout would not thrive. Here's something really interesting, Ian. We have this grove of young hemlocks that are probably about six or seven years old. With the decline of this mature hemlock and the gap in the canopy coverage, we now have enough sunlight that it activated the seed that was laying dormant, allowing these guys to thrive. What's the benefit of a young stand of hemlock developing like this? Not only is this going to be the next generation of trees, but it's also an excellent bedding site for deer during the winter. What are some distinguishing features for hemlocks? Hemlock trees are identifiable by their short needles. Hemlocks typically have an X-current shape, which means they're pyramidal. Um, they typically have a pendulous branching structure, meaning the branches will weep down towards the ground. Um, they will get about 175 feet tall for a specimen hemlock, and oftentimes four to five feet wide at the base. In our urban landscape, they oftentimes will not exceed about 50 to 60 feet. Hemlocks can be found from Georgia all the way up to Maritime Canada. What makes it so adaptable to the, to the urban environment, not just a, a native woodland environment like this? Yeah, the great thing about hemlocks is that they will tolerate being an understory tree. So you can plant this tree where you don't have enough sunlight for, say, something like an arborvitae. Understory is a perfect place for a young hemlock tree to grow, but they're adaptable, like you said, because they will grow in, in full sunlight as well. They're used often in, in the urban setting because of their ability to tolerate shaping and, and aggressive pruning. A lot of people will prune them as a hedge. You said that the, that the hemlock likes well-drained soil and is tolerant to uh, a natural woodland or streamside setting. How does that uh, contrast to the urban environment? The urban environments typically have poor drainage and a lot of compaction. They can tolerate water but it has to be a well-drained site. In front of us, um, talk about the, the soil needs of a hemlock. Look, look at this tree, it's, it's growing literally on top of a patch of rocks, but it's got a thick layer of organic soil and it's extremely well-drained. So despite it being literally growing on top of the creek, it's doing fine. It's a beautiful specimen. What kind of common pest issues do we deal with with hemlock? Yeah, that's a great question. So the two main um, concerns that we have for hemlocks, pest related, are hemlock woolly adelgid and elongate hemlock scale. Both are sap sucking insects, so they will tap into the vascular tissue of the tree and steal the nutrients more or less. Are these easily treatable? Uh, the hemlock woolly adelgid is relatively easy to treat on a specimen scale. That is to say, you wouldn't expect to treat a forest of hemlock trees for this insect, but a specimen tree on your urban landscape, yes, absolutely, it's easy to care for. 
There are a few management techniques that we use for hemlock woolly adelgid. This can be horticultural oil applications, trunk injections, or systemic bark treatments. Why do hemlocks yellow? I often will get calls about hemlocks yellowing in the autumn. A lot of this can be seasonal needle drop, but sometimes it's related to stress. Some things that will stress a hemlock are poor soil composition and poor drainage. Poor soil quality is managed by soil amendments, and that starts with a soil sample. Beautiful soil. This is exactly what we would expect to find beside a creek with a healthy stand of hemlocks. We have a healthy O horizon of duff, followed by a silt loam A horizon, and finally our B horizon, our base soil. We have our best success managing concerns with hemlocks when we're able to mimic the natural environment that the tree grows in.